Welcome to the Cryptonimatron. In today's video, we'll be looking at the five different ways you can make the most out of your ICO investments. But if this is your first time here and you want to know about ICOs, you want to know about cryptocurrency, blockchain, Bitcoin, and other related matters, then click on the subscribe button, click on that bell notification icon. You'll get notified whenever I upload new content and whenever I go live. Thanks for doing that, guys. So number five is six Ps. Now, these are in no particular order, guys. These are, uh, you know, this might be helpful, this video, but I thought to do it would be a bit of fun um, instead of the usual ICO reviews and uh, news articles. So proper planning prevents piss poor performance. Performance is only going to come when you've planned accordingly. That's what the six Ps are. So first of all, identify your ICO. Do your research into it as well. Does it look like it could be a potential uh, investment opportunity for you? Do you like it? You know, does it tick all the boxes? Then uh, identification's the, the, the first key. And the second thing is you might have to whitelist and do your KYC if required well in advance of the ICO actually kicking off. So it's a consideration to actually um, make sure that this is done. And if you're investing in quite a lot of ICOs, as I do, then you're going to have to write them down or you're going to have to make a, a spreadsheet, as I do, of all the ICOs that you're uh, whitelisting in and you've done K KYC checks for. So you don't miss out on any potential um, opportunities that you might want to get involved with. The next thing to do is allocate and prepare your funds. Uh, you know, make sure your funds are in, let's for, for example, say MetaMask or MyEtherWallet. They're ready. They're ready to go for when the ICO is going to kick off. You've allocated um, a, a reasonable amount of funds that you're happy with to put into that particular project. Mark the date and time in your diary. I have missed a few ICOs. I mean, everybody probably has been guilty of that. Uh, you know, oh, I want to go to this ICO, and then you end up going to the pub, or you end up uh, going out for the day, or whatever, and you miss the opportunity, and then you end up kicking yourself. Uh, oh, I, I forgot that ICO. So again, it's all about planning. Uh, what I do now is I have a, a spreadsheet, and I actually I take a lot of time every day to update it to make sure if I've uh, you know applied for an ICO um, or you know I check the time when an ICO is going to come up and I've got it linked with my calendar and my email and everything so uh, there's a, you know there's a, I lessen my chance of actually missing a project I'm interested in. And if you miss out on a gas war as well, this is uh, some advice I learned myself: is just pick yourself up and get on with it. Uh, you know, move on. Don't take to social media like a crusader and uh, vilify the team uh, that have launched the ICO because you didn't get in, you know, and complain about it. There's no point. You've missed out. Move on. And uh, make sure you know exactly how much you paid for the, the token at the particular time of the ICO. So if you went in and you, um, you know, make sure you know how much you paid in Ether or uh, NEO or even Fiat as well. So that you can, you've got a sort of reference point for the future. It's quite important because oftentimes you'll, uh, you know, you, you'll go on to um, exchanges and you won't really know exactly how much you've paid for a, a, a token. So it's good to keep a record. Um, just as an aside here, I notice Etherscan now in their token transfers uh, section actually list ICO prices of the tokens, which is quite handy as a reference point. But always note down how much you paid yourself. And always be aware, when are you going to get the coins and tokens? Where are they? You know, make sure you've, uh, you've, you're always in control of what you've paid for. So number four is keep your emotions in check. This is very important, guys. You know, I know this video is a little bit fun, but actually this is quite important. So don't get attached to particular projects. Uh, you know, when we invest in ICOs, we tend to see them as our little babies and we want to see them grow and bloom into uh, fruition. But if you get too attached to them, it can adversely affect the decisions you're making with them. Decide on a strategy and stick with it. If you're happy with 2x, or you're flipping an ICO, or you're um, you know you're happy with a 5x, or you won't take less than a 10x. Stick to that strategy. Don't get greedy and suddenly flip flop and change it in the middle. Stick with what you're doing. You've made your plan and uh, act accordingly. Another thing is show no mercy. If the token doesn't perform, get rid of it. Get it out of your portfolio. If it's a dog, you might lose even more money. Cut it loose from the herd. Let the lions have it. And always sell when you've met your targets. You know, if you've allocated a 30% target for a particular ICO project, 
you get that in return. Don't get greedy and hang on because inevitably you'll end up becoming a bag holder when things are not so good or when the market turns. So sell when you've met your profit targets. This is one I've been guilty of on many occasions. Don't feel bad and lament if a token moons after you sold it. <laughs> you know, I've sold a few. Tron was one. I don't mind admitting that. Um, and there's been a few others. I sold Vibe Hub too early as well. Um, and maybe a couple others I could name. Uh, but don't feel bad and, and don't cry over spilt milk. You know, pick yourself up and move on. You already made a profit, hopefully out of an ICO. So if it moons later, it does a 30 or 40x, don't beat yourself up, up about it. That 30 or 40x will happen in the future with another token, another ICO. The other thing is not to just buy back into a project just because. If you've been in at the ICO stage, you've realized profits and you've sold it, don't buy back in just because you had good luck with it previously. Uh, you know, you've got to start all over again, do your research again into the project, do your technical analysis, your fundamental analysis as well. Um, don't buy back in just because it made you money in the, in, in the, last, uh, the last time you held it. And the other important thing is don't FOMO in ever. FOMO is fear of missing out. I'm sure you all know that, but don't go into projects, don't go into ICOs because you've got a fear that you might miss out on them. Uh, you know, there are plenty of opportunities out there, guys. You don't have to go into one. You know, the, if, if you miss out on a 30X, like I said, there'll be another one comes along in the future. It, it's about identifying and picking and reacting. And again, don't, if, if, if you hear a YouTuber, for example, shilling a project, or you, you know, um, if I give a project a good review, for example, don't don't be scared that you're going to miss out on it. It's just my opinion. You know, fear of missing out can um, lead you into a project that you're not prepared. You're not done your own due diligence on, and you could get wrecked. Again, if something's pumping as well, you don't go into a pump because you you, you know you're inevitably going to be left holding the bags when it goes down on the other side. Always act on facts and your analysis as well. So, have you got the facts at hand? Are you happy with them? Have you analyzed all the aspects of the uh, the ICO? Are you happy with it? That's it. Act on those. Don't act on emotions. So number three, be your own boss. Be confident. Make your own decisions. Don't listen to others too much. And you know the first thing is don't act only on the advice of others as well. If somebody's shilling you something, uh, you know they've probably got an ulterior motive for doing so. And don't act on anybody else's advice. Always be confident that you've acted in your own best interest based on the research that you've done, not what you've been told by somebody else. Because somebody else's motives may be of detriment to you. They might be trying to shell an ICO to you because they're getting paid for it. They might uh, you know, be wanting you to go into the ICO for a particular reason uh, because one of their mates is on the, the team or something or they're an advisor. So always be aware uh, you know, the, the, and be suspicious at all times. Cryptocurrency is like that. Uh, the cryptocurrency space at the moment is, um, is quite a suspicious place. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of bad actors, a lot of malicious um, uh, things going on. You know, uh, so always be a little bit suspicious. Be a bit cynical, maybe, you know, and, and always be wary of what others are doing. Why are they suggesting things to you? Why are they offering you this opportunity? It's not for, it's not for your benefit. Nobody acts altruistically, really. They're always doing it for their own benefit. So bear that in mind. And of course, do your own research and due diligence. I say it at the end of every video, and I can't stress how important it is. You've got to do your own research. You know, don't let others do research for you. Don't let me do research in my videos and then make a decision based on what I tell you. Do your own research. Be your own boss. Be your own, you know, trust in yourself. And don't let others convince you if you have doubts. Those doubts should be enough to, to you for you to make a decision. And if you have too many doubts, don't bother getting invested in that particular ICO. And only invest when you are completely confident that you're making a decision on your own terms as well. You've not had your arm twisted. You're not making it based on, um, you know, you're trying to help people out or you've been sort of uh, hoodwinked into it. Make the decision based on your own terms. And be wary of pump and dump groups, paid groups, and other collectives that are claiming to reward you as well. Why have they, they've not got your interest at heart, they've got their own interest at heart, that's why you're paying in the first place, so they can make money out of you. 
So they're not going to suggest things to you that, that potentially benefit you unless they are going to gain out of it as well. So always be suspicious of those kind of groups as well. I'm not a member of any paid groups. Um, I'm not a member of any pump and dump groups. I do my own due diligence and I live by and stick by my own decisions. And you should do as well. And hard work and time put into this is essential. You don't become a boss, you don't become your own boss, you don't become a CEO of a company if you don't put in the graft. You've got to put in the hard work, you've got to go through the books of, you know, you've got to tear an ICO apart from top to bottom, go through the whole website, read everything, read the white paper, guys. You know, there's guys out there on YouTube saying the white paper isn't important, they don't read it. Honestly, I suppose that's why they get hacked out of two million dollars. Well, you, you know, Think about it. Do the hard graft. It's the only way you're ever going to succeed. So number two is diversification of risk. You've got to diversify your portfolio. You've got to make sure you do proper risk management. I can't stress how important that is. And, you know, some of the key things are don't put all your eggs in one basket. If you've got $1,000 or let's say for Ethereum, right? For example, um, if you've got for Ethereum to invest in ICOs, don't put them all in one ICO, guys, because that's a big risk. If that ICO doesn't succeed, you will inevitably lose your money. Try to spread them over a number of projects. Two, three, or even four projects would be even better. Spread the load evenly as well. Don't heavily go into one ICO to the detriment of others. Think about what you're doing and pick good ICOs. They might not all come along at the same time, guys. You might have to wait for four good projects to go into, for example, but they will come. And that diversifies your risk and means you have more chance of making returns. And if you're keen on one particular project, then, you know, of course, put a little bit more into that project. You'll end up kicking yourself if you didn't. But again, not at the detriment of other projects. And don't take big risks, unnecessary risks, by putting too much into a single project. Mix up the different tokens or coins in your portfolio as well. If you're going into ICOs, don't just pick one type of ICO uh, every time. You know, don't just go into logistics coins uh, or tokens. Don't go into uh, privacy coins. Um, you know, think about what you're investing in. Think about its competition and mix it up. Mix your portfolio up so you're at less risk if a certain sector gets adversely affected by news, regulations or whatever. And then there's a security issue. And again, I hate to mention him again, but Ian Bellina got hacked yesterday and he had multiple wallets, but he had inadequate security measures. Now, what happened with Ian was that he uh, had his keys on Evernote, I believe. Now, who keeps their keys on Evernote? It's ridiculous. It can be hacked. It can be accessed very, very easily. So you've got to put a little bit of effort into your security here, guys, right? And Lesson learned yesterday. So you should be paying attention and acting accordingly. Now using multiple wallets, I don't care whether you've got, if you've got $2,000 and that's a lot of money for you, then you should have that $2,000 of tokens in 10 different wallets, right? Because it's more difficult to hack 10 wallets than it is to hack one wallet. It's that simple, right? You also should have them offline secured by a ledger device as well, or a Trezor, because that's the best way to do it. Now I'm not saying they can't be hacked, anything can be hacked but it lessens your risk and that's what it's all about. The other thing is have an exit plan. If the market suddenly turned bearish and uh, you know it's not looking too rosy, don't just hold on and think well, it's gonna get better in the future. Yeah, it might six months down the line, but turn this to your advantage. Have an exit plan, put your funds into um, tether, you know, uh, realize it back into fiat for the time being. You know, don't just, hold on and, and don't take any action. That's, that, that, you know, that increases your risk. You've got an opportunity, realize that opportunity. And again, it goes without saying, but I have to reiterate, don't keep a lot of um, tokens on exchanges. If you've gone into an ICO and you're selling some off, you know, and you've got a lot of tokens, don't keep them on an exchange, put them in a wallet and only transfer what you're wanting to sell or what you're wanting to trade. And the other big one again, you know, I hate to say it, third time I'm mentioning them, final time I promise guys, I promise, keep your info private at all times, you make yourself a target. You know, if you're posting your portfolio and you're boasting and you're bragging, uh, then you're only making yourself a target, you're doing yourself no favors whatsoever. Uh, you know, every, every aspect of your uh, 
information should be private. Your uh, what you've invested in, what you, how much how much you've made out of it, how much holdings you've currently got in crypto. Everything should be private. Don't let malicious actors take advantage of that. Number one, it's all about picking the right one. So how do you do that? Well, you first of all, you've got to make sure it's a legit project. The easiest way to get wrecked is if you pick a scam and they're getting better at it now, guys. I've seen some scam projects out there now that, you know, that, that, that look pretty good. There was one that um, a, a, a Visa, Visa or something, the, the, the wallet, the hardware wallet, that looked like a fairly legitimate project. Uh, yeah, if you did some due diligence and you, uh, you dug a little deeper, you'd probably come to the conclusion it's too high of a risk to invest in. But they're getting better. You know, it's getting more convincing and the, the legit projects are getting harder to spot from the scams. Do as much research as possible, guys, yeah? Watch as many videos as you can. Read as much information as you can. Read every single thing on the website. Read the white paper, read the light paper, read everything. All the blog articles on the project. Google for it, read everything. And have a selection criteria and stick to it. Don't, um, you know, don't just go into an ICO. If it doesn't meet your selection criteria, leave it alone. I have a selection criteria. And I've been guilty several times of putting money into things that don't meet my selection criteria. And I've been wrecked accordingly. So always have a selection criteria. I will do a video on my selection criteria. Uh, you uh, are probably aware of the um, bigger points because you've watched my ICO review videos and they're chaptered. So you know what sort of things I look for when I'm reviewing an ICO. So those are, those are my selection criteria, but there's a bit more to it and I'll do a video on it later on. Don't be afraid to ask questions because we don't know everything. I'm always on social media asking questions about ICOs. You know, are they burning tokens is the biggest one. And, you know, are they, uh, are they offering airdrops later on? Is this, you know, are they having, you know, ask the questions. There's no stupid questions. There's only stupid answers. And we're all relatively new to the space as well. We're all in the same boat. And we should be all working together for everybody's benefit, not just for, a financial gain to ourselves. Yep, we all need to eat, we all need to live, but it's a community and helping others takes two minutes, you know, and it's a nice feeling as well. Trust your instincts. If you've got a gut feeling about something and you think it's gonna, you know, you think it's gonna be a bad investment, walk away. Trust your instincts, but always back them up with facts if you're gonna invest in something, yeah? If you've got an instinct that project's going to be good, why? Why is it going to be? Why are your instincts telling you that? And often, projects that you like and you can identify with, they often make good investments because you might, for example, know a little bit about the um, project you're investing in and why it's actually going to be you know, um, in demand, why it's going to succeed why it's going to be of benefit to the industry, why is it going to be disruptive. So, you know, oftentimes, not always, but often, if you like a project uh, and you, you can identify with it, then it might actually make a good investment in the medium to longer term as well in particular. So that's the end of the video, guys. If you are bullish on any ICOs, let me know which ones in the comments below and let me know what you like me to review in the future as well because I listen to you guys, so if you all uh, are requesting a particular ICO, I'll take a closer look at it and then probably do a review video on it. Same goes for tokens as well. It doesn't have to be ICOs. I look at everything here. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's it for today. If you like the video, please give it a like. Every little bit helps. If you're not already, please subscribe to the channel. Be part of the community, the Cryptonomatron community. And um, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video. Um, also, I've got a little poll up here, there you go, uh, and what ICO video do you want to see next? And that is the uh, poll, there's a few choices there, let me know and I'll get it done. And uh, yeah, so thanks for watching and I'll see you later.